78 Sports TV here. So I'm checking out my boy Boxing Beast and Rhymes page. Doing it from Boxing Beast and Rhymes channel. This is Tony Thompson. Chilling with Boxing Beast and Rhymes. Hey, Glenn, you chilling with Boxing Beast and Rhymes. This is that Mayor Hardcore Man Store on Boxing Beast and Rhymes YouTube channel. I don't know if you want to. Possible Manny Pacquiao fight with Boy Mayor. How do you feel about that? Well, basically, I mean, it's a fight that still has a potential to happen. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. Let's diagnose it. Let's break it down. Andy Lee says one of the people he's dedicating this fight to is Emmanuel Stewart. He now has Adam Booth training him. What I noticed straight away is Matt Cobra is a southpaw. Andy Lee, very big at 160. At least very tall. Big long reach. He has to use that effectively. Andy Lee himself, southpaw. It definitely suits Andy Lee from this range here. His wide leg stance doesn't have to move that much. See, the wide leg stance can often work better for a taller fighter. With a long reach, he automatically has range, you know. He can use that to skip round the ring, pump the jab, and use the wide, the wide stance to get some extra power in his shots and still maintain range while sometimes we see Adrian Broner boxing from the same stance. He can't get around the ring, you know, but the taller guy, it's a different dynamic. Doesn't have to move as much. Let's see if Andy Lee can implement that today. And let's see if Matt Kobarov can cut the distance down. Because that's looking how the fight is going to play out. Both men look like they want to throw bombs here. And Lee stifles Cobra off his side when he tries to unload a few bombs there. Cobra is trying to time the taller man. Fires a few shots to the body there. Range finding shots. Both men tie up there. Nice counter right by Andy Lee. Gets caught there. Wades in there. Needs to throw the jab. Lee needs to stick with that jab. Doesn't just want to be throwing his hands blindly without no setup. Andy Lee round, in my opinion. Andy Lee takes that round. Adam Booth there. Assertively talking to his charge. Giving him some tactical advice and keeping him focused for this opportunity at the WBO title. Dave Cordwell is also in the corner, I believe. Round six. Cordwell tagged with a big right. Massive right by Andy Lee. And he's going to close the show here. Closes the show. Yes, indeed. Time with his man from range. Big southpaw right connected. Let his hands go. And Korbarov was finished for the night. Well, Andy Lee becomes a WBO champion. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the other four rounds on the delayed recording I have. They only showed the first and sixth. But, you know, good win for Andy Lee. Great win. He's in the shake-up now, you know. I don't know what's happened to Peter Quillen. It's just one of the weirdest stories in boxing right now, what's happened to Peter Quillen. But that is what it is. Another guy who has to be given credit here, and he's been forgotten, is the British trainer Adam Booth, who has steered Andy Lee to this title. He stops the unbeaten Cobra, convincingly. And Adam Booth, in my opinion, is 
One dude who never gets his due. Some people laugh at David Hayes' career and some of his decisions and some of his performances, like the Klitschko performance and a couple of the pull-outs and whatever, you know. It's um, debatable, it's questionable, the motives behind them and the manner in which they were done. But nevertheless, man, you're talking about a unified cruiserweight champion and a WBA heavyweight champion and Adam Booth steered him to that they done it their way from a promotional stance and how they went about fighting in the ring and preparing for fights they done it their way and, um, and Andy Lee he seems to have benefited look how happy Adam Booth is man he's so happy and you can see why you can see why it's a great moment it's a great moment, man. Adam Booth, <laughs> happy as anything, kisses Andy Lee on the cheek. He's just there, uh, you know. And we have to give Adam Booth his credit. Let's not forget, he wasn't in George Groves' corner when he took on Carl Froch in both fights. And there's an argument to be made that that was a mistake by Groves, we'll have to say, because it's him who didn't pick up Froch's belts. Adam Booth, you know, he's known for being an outspoken dude. He was recently split with David Hay. If David Hay continues to fight, nobody seems to know why they have did that. Even in their splitting, they've remained kind of mysterious in dispensing the details on the split. Was it amicable? Was there a dispute between the two? No one knows because they're not saying and that's how they ran their camp as well. And yeah, you know, if you can think of another British trainer with a record like Adam Booth right now, obviously you have Rob McCracken, who's got Carl Froch. But, you know, as impressive as what he's doing, Adam Booth has actually had a heavyweight champion. They're not easy to cultivate. It's not easy to cultivate heavyweight champions. And he's done it. I've always said this should be, this should be, in my opinion... Anthony Joshua's trainer, if you're going to pick from the UK. That's my opinion. Some people may ask, well, what's Booth going to do? Is he going to turn him into um, a David Hay fighter? You know, sit back, try and read the leads and then burst into action. That kind of fight where he's not applying steady pressure. Well, not necessarily, you know. Like, we see he won the title here with Andy Lee. And there seems to be some compromise, you know. I don't think he had to do that much of a recycling job on Andy Lee because he was with Manny Stewart beforehand and he was already an established pro, a relatively seasoned pro. So, you know, he could add some things, he could work on some things he saw was there and maybe take some away. And that's what you do with any boxer you have. So, um, I don't think it would be a big culture shock if Anthony Joshua was training under Adam Booth, you know. If you're coaching, I guess you just take a boxer individually, diagnose their needs, bad habits, and you go from there. The whole point of joining a new trainer is you are going to make a hybrid. You're going to bring some things to the trainer, and he's going to bring some things to you. That, I mean, that's only natural. That's only natural. And I think it would work. I think it would work. I think it would work well. Virgil Hunter hasn't changed Amir Khan totally from what I'm seeing. He still throws the fast flurries. He doesn't bounce around the ring as much. We see that. His timing is better. And he's getting the results. He's getting the results. But yo, big up Andy Lee. Great performance. Great stoppage. 